Let's have a look at question two now. Suppose that there's a second firm that enters this market and the total cost for this firm is the following. So now we have two firms in the market and they offer the same good at the following price, but now the quantity belongs to both of them. So we have a quantity from the first firm and from the second firm. What's going to be the new market equilibrium if both firms determine simultaneously the number of slots they offer to the market? So if they are Cournot competitors, that's the question. First of all, let's understand what's happening here. We had the monopolist in question A. So recall, this is what we've been doing so far in, uh, in the first question. We had a monopolist, we found out a quantity, a price. Now we have a duopoly, we have two players in the market. So we have two players that compete in the style of Cournot. What is this Cournot game? What does it mean? It's a game theory. It's a it's a game theory. What kind of game theory? So we're having here, we're having here Cournot model. Let's just write it like that. Cournot model. This is a static game theory. Why is it static? We're gonna explain in a second. Static uh, game theory. It's static because the firms decide simultaneously. This is the keyword. Simultaneously means at the same time. So we they don't wait for one company to move and then they react they take into account the fact that the competitor maximizes his profit and that competitor takes into account that this guy maximizes his profit. So we have two firms, hope this is not gonna be confusing. Firm one, we have firm two. Obviously firm one is gonna choose a quantity that maximizes his profit. And of course firm two is also gonna choose a quantity that maximizes his own profit. But the only thing that matters here is that firm one is taking into account the quantity that firm two will produce. It's taking it into account. In its profit function, it will take into account the fact that there's gonna be another quantity on the market because it has to adjust how much he's gonna sell. If he's not the only player, remember, he must take into account what's happening in the market from the other player. And the same logic goes here. This company over here, the second player in the market, is gonna maximize his quantity by taking into account the fact that firm one also puts uh, some quantity on the market. So it's gonna take into account Q1 as well. Now, how does this look like? Let's see. We have this price, right? We have a total cost function for the second company. We also need the total cost function from the first company. So let's just copy paste it from here because we calculated. The total cost from the first company was this one, Q squared plus 100. So let me just uh, do like that, copy here and paste it over here like that. This is the total cost from the first company. So TC1, let's call it TC1. This is, okay, we got that. What do we need? We need to maximize profits for each company. So we need the profit for the first one, the profit for the second one. So let's do that. The profit for the first company will be profit for the first company will be the total revenue of the first company minus the total cost of the first company. Now the key is to find out the total revenue of the first company because recall, there's gonna be a relationship with the second company, with the second quantity. How's that look like? We have here the price function and we know that total revenue has to do with the price function. What is the total revenue? Total revenue, let's work with the first company. Total revenue for the first company is equal to the price times the quantity sold by the first company. We know that the price is including is including the quantities from each from each company. So if we were to write the price function once again, let's write it over here like that. The price would look like 100 minus quantity 1 minus quantity 2 because if we open the brackets, minus with plus makes into a minus. So this would be our price now. We have to use this into our total revenue function. So let's use it. Uh, we will have the following. We will have 100 minus Q1 minus Q2 multiplied with Q1. This is the total revenue. Let's open the brackets. We will have what? We will have 100 Q1 um, minus Q1 square minus Q1 times Q2. That's just the total revenue. The total cost, we know the total cost is equal to 100 uh, plus Q square. So that's going to be Q square plus 100. Now with this in mind, and with this in mind, we can find out our profit for the first company. So let's do it. The profit for the first company will be the following. Let's write it here below. Profit of the first company will be the following. It will be 100 uh, Q1 minus Q1 square minus Q1 Q2. Uh, that was total revenue minus 
the total cost which is q square minus 100 again we're opening the bracket so plus 100 becomes minus 100 due to this negative sign so we have if we if we write it in a better way what are we going to have we're going to have uh, 100 q1 minus q1 square minus another q1 square is going to be minus 2 q1 square minus q1 q2 and then minus 100 in the end minus 100 in the end and what do we want we want to find out the optimal quantity for the first company so we're going to differentiate the profit function with respect to the first quantity now if we do that how is it how is it going to look like the profit of the first company derivative with respect to q1 is equal to zero meaning we'll have the following a hundred minus 2q1 squared derivative with respect to q1 that's going to be 2 times 2q1 minus q2 then 100 derivative is just 0 so that's going to equal to 0 meaning we will have 100 minus 4q1 100 minus 4q1 minus q2 is equal to 0 yes 100 minus 4q1 minus q2 equals to 0 now let's do the same for the second company and then we'll see what we get so if we do it for the second company we need <coughs> total revenue for the second company and total cost for the second company it's gonna be very very analogous so hopefully we'll do it faster uh, let me see go left or go right let's go below let's go below over here so we'll have uh, profit from the second company is equal to total revenue of the second company minus the total cost of the second company now We'll have the same logic profit in the second company is equal to the price times the quantity in the second company minus what is the total cost in the second company well that's gonna equal to that's gonna equal to it's given somewhere in the question um what was it this one q square plus 200 q square plus 200 so we will use it if we open the brackets that's going to be minus q square minus 200 now what is the price recall the price is the following this was the price we had it we had it here this is the price so we will have a hundred minus q1 minus q2 we will have a hundred minus q1 minus q2 multiplied with q2 minus q square minus 200 now let's open the brackets we're gonna go quite fast here because it's getting too long so a hundred q2 minus q1 q2 minus q2 times two q2 is q2 square minus another q2 square uh, by the way this is this should be q2 square q2 square minus 200 now we have the profit of the second uh, company let's differentiate it with respect to quantity and make it equal to zero to find out the optimal the optimal quantity for the second company we will have the following 100 q2 derivative that's 100 minus q1 times q2 derivative with respect to q2 is q1 minus what do we have here uh, q2 to the power 2 derivative that's minus 2 q2 and here we also have q2 to the power 2 derivative that's another 2 q2 minus 200 derivative that's just 0 so this must equal to 0 let's write it in a better way one last step so we have a hundred minus q1 minus 4 q2 equals to 0 now this looks very similar to what we had before and we will work with both of them in the next video to see what is going to be the optimal quantities and prices.